everybody and welcome welcome to the rest of our first day of the spring blog festival and as i said we've got a surprise there's our surprise is coming up there she is shelly that's right hi shelly what a nice surprise you're not using your headset it's echoing Ooh, Ooh i caught you Okay, here we go. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That was my, my bad. My bad. Okay, yeah, now it's not echoing. Okay, well, uh, our speaker couldn't be here. But he was good enough to volunteer and to share, and that's what it's all about. It's about sharing. So I don't think Shelly needs any introduction. So uh, people are going to be coming in as we go and uh, you're all invited yes you're all invited to tweet and share this on facebook and everywhere okay so that's the link that you can share of the attendee okay so share that oh yeah and yes, um, and let's start so shelly i'm gonna shelly's not tara okay so i'm gonna be writing as tara as okay, Nelly here we go sorry green. sorry sorry no, shelly you'll have bad. to get a color if you want to add in the chat box so that you can be <laughs> you in oh. that's okay <laughs> now you know how it happened <laughs> purple all right so you're in a purple mood okay let's get so sorry everyone uh tara was gonna be i will share that tara has a wonderful blogging community and that you should yeah uh, so i can show that it's um in it she does Blogging with over with near, over a hundred thousand language learners around the world from my EC, which is my English club, and she's done many many presentations for me in the past. They're wonderful, and she's a moderator for that. And you can follow her at Tara Benwell, um, and you can even get your. It's a free community to join, so you can even have. Uh, you can even have your students join. You can join. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you. I didn't even. I'm in purple. The, the thing about Tara is that when she does this and she has the blogging challenges weekly. And so sorry, everyone. Uh, Tara was going to be. I will share that Tara has a wonderful blogging community and that you should. Uh, uh, so I can show that. It's um, in. It, she does. Blogging with over with near, over a hundred thousand language learners around the world from my EC, which is my English club, and she's done many many presentations for me in the past. So they're wonderful, and she's a moderator for that. And you can follow her at Tara Benwell. Um, and you can even get your it's a free community to join, so you can even have uh, you can even have your students join. You can join as a teacher. They have lots of English teachers. I'm an English teacher there I love the the thing about Tara is that when she does this and she has the blogging challenges weekly she has them come and they use multimedia they'll do things like they'll use wordle or they'll use uh, animodo or they use uh, different types web 2.0 tools that they embed within their blog and they speak authentic English and they use English to do this so I think that it's a really a wonderful, wonderful uh, thing that she does this with the English club. And it's free. So, and it's one of the biggest language learning communities online. So, I think it's really a great opportunity. I'm going to talk to you about uh, one multimedia project um, that I've been looking at, which is getting students to video log with, um, and Tara, if you can put in the, the MyEC, um, that would be great so that way people can see where they can go for that because I don't have that on hand <laughs> right now and uh, I'm a, a, a moderator of this so I don't know how to work things completely just how to present here <laughs> um, I'm going to show you some things on how to video log I talked about that in my last session how you can do this with Instagram and you can even do this with uh, Vine, which are free formats, and I'll show you. Uh, I'll have somebody jump in in a little bit who actually does this with 178, 11, 12. 
year old so in Texas, which are language learners as well. Um, so one thing that I can do is uh, show you how to use these two tools. They're creating videos. So if you've ever done anything like create any kind of video with your students, then this will be very easy for you to do. So if you've ever done a video project with your students, whether it be a flip camera, whether it be a digital camera, you can put a smiley face inside the, um, the box, then that would be great if you could put that inside the chat box. Now it'd be wonderful. And we have, um, I really like this quote. It says, it's hard in the mind of the true lens of the camera. And I think it's really incredible when we get our students to express themselves through video. I started using this uh, even as one of my teaching instructional practices when I first began to work with learners. And they had low literacy at the time. I had 100 students in one class. And one way that I engaged them was for them to make videos. They really enjoyed doing that. With Vine and Instagram, they're sort of like YouTube where they're social video networking tools, but they're only free apps. You can only do this with a mobile device. But when I'm working around the world, even I've worked with refugees in Athens. You just saw Marissa Constantinidis. Marissa was my teacher trainer. And Marissa went ahead and she said that, oh, I use a lot of myself in these slides. <laughs> so you'll see a lot of these things. Um, so I'm going to compare and contrast the differences between um, Instagram and in Vine. Um, they're only mobile apps, though. You can only create videos with them on a mobile app. It's free. You can use it with Android. You can use it with uh, different types of um, you know, iOS devices. You can. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. That's very nice of you to say I'm photogenic. <laughs> um, you can use this with Windows 8, and you can view them online. So you can embed them and view them in a blog, but you can only create them when you're um, on a, a mobile device. So there's a couple ways you can do this. There's ways so I've done this. I've either used my mobile device as being the only one who has a mobile device in the classroom and had this of all my learners and set up a school account. Or you can have it where your learners, if they're 13 years old and above, they can create accounts on Vine and Instagram and they can repost and you can have them blogging for themselves as well. <laughs> Thank you, Maria Hissoup. <laughs> so this is Instagram. With Instagram, you get 15-second videos. I'm more comfortable with 15-second videos. Um, you get unlimited image uploads. You get filters, frames. You can blur it. It looks beautiful. You can do all that. You can still comment. You can have hashtag. You can tag people. So a lot of times, that's what you do with your students. When you repost, you can repost their videos and share them in your stream. And and you can tag them and then their parents can see you can have a private account they don't you don't have to make it public it can be a thing uh, a private account as well you can geotag geotag is great if you're doing different types of research then your students can let people know what um, that means now the meaning of tag that's very important like they ask is it means that you can put an at sign like we do in face and they'll notice it'll get a ping on them and they'll say hey I'm in her video or and that's great for the students because when they make videos together they can do that they can put at signs and put their names and they can say oh I'm in this video too so that's a great way to get more attention to it um, the other thing is this is with vine vine is a little bit different you can see that I use green with vine and blue with Instagram a lot so with vine you get unlimited uploads as well both of them are, will store your videos you don't have to store them inside your computer. You get six second videos. That's the time limit. Only six seconds, not six minutes. Six seconds. Uh, you have iOS or Android. You can loop them. So what it means is that they'll replay again and again and again. So you have six seconds, and the same six seconds will keep playing. You can embed them. You can make it in an animated GIF. 
which is really exciting, but you need a separate tool to do that. You can have it in iOS, Android. Um, you don't have very beautiful filters like, like you do with Instagram. I actually have someone here. This is uh, Jake Duncan here. And he, this is his Instagram account. He works with uh, bilingual culture. He teaches Spanish and he teaches English and he teaches English language learners. He has 178 learners and what he does is he set up a class account. They're 11 and 12 so there he shows the work they do in class so you can see what they're doing in class and with Instagram you can also have pictures. You can't have that with Vine. So when it comes to an instructional tool I prefer Instagram. He might be different there. <laughs> He's going to let you know in just a second while I go through this and give you his opinion before I go through Instagram. <laughs> You're not on yet, Jake. I'm watching. <laughs> I'm getting to see. And with me, Jake? Sure. <laughs> He'll correct anything that I've done. Yes, you can make a movie with six second leaps. <laughs> that is not <laughs> which guy? I don't see that guy. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so then you have where you set up a profile and you can put here. You can do it by classes. So you can make a different Vine account for each class if you want or a different Instagram account. You just name it. You have to have. I always put it as a free Gmail, so I set up a different Gmail to do that. Um, and then you can put post or be you do up your profile. You can have a hashtag. Do I recommend this? No, absolutely not. There's a reason why. A lot of people, Edugram, Edscape. There's so many different types of teachers who put a hashtag. You would think collecting all your assignments in a hashtag would be nice, but there's a lot of and sometimes they put really horrible things on education accounts. They think it's funny. So I would not, you cannot monitor a hashtag. You can monitor your own account. So I prefer the class account versus hashtag. That's something to note. That, I um, think it would be more on Vine, but there is a less of the hashtag spamming with disgusting stuff on your Vine. It's actually more on Instagram. Um, and so there's a couple things you can do with this. You can explore vocabulary, theories, concepts. You can show them something like the Pythagorean theorem. You can show them something like what a uh, psych and uh, Newton's law is. Because you can express all of this on video. It's a way for them to see and when they connect that visually, then that's when they get very interested and excited in something very complex. Um, like the Pythagorean theorem, um, they are able to see and make a connection, and it's the real world. They, this is their stage. The world is their stage outside. Their friends, uh, you know, get to be their characters. They get to show you the learning, and they get to relate it to realia and their real world. They get to say, wow, this isn't separate. This is actually together. So one of the things that you can do is also as a pre-test, you can get them to think about a topic that way. You show a six second video, a 15 second video, it takes no time at all. Oh, that's okay, Raquel, <laughs> to misspell my name. People misspell it all the time. I misspell it. I don't even pronounce it right. Help them visualize what they read. Um, you can showcase, you can engage parents with the great things. This when we, and Jake and I were in New York and we were flying. One of the parents uh, responded in his Twitter and his, his Instagram and was like, wow, you know, you're so-and-so's favorite teacher. And he was showing them things like his delta, you know, with a delta and his geography. And they looked at it. You can work with different images, and when you do, this is what it looks like. Look, they're all around taking pictures, whatever device they have. So let's go on to the next one. How do we do this? Well, one of the great things is that with Vine and with Instagram, they play with professional photography. They play with what's called the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is this diagram here. And this is my beautiful little pug, Roscoe, who happens to be a lot of times uh, um, the main star, and uh, he's not here right now with us in Houston, but he 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 pops out in a lot of my videos, my accounts. <laughs> hi, he says hi to you too, James and Spirit. <laughs> and then so what he does is, um, what you do is, 
your students, they learn. And that's one of the great things about it. When you take learning and you put it through the lens like this, then you're getting your students to focus on a particular subject on the learning. So you take all the clutter out, and when you put it in a lens, you, you take it all out, and they focus, and they get to observe what's going on, which I think is really great for learning. And so the rule of thirds shows them how to take a better picture. This is what photographers follow. And what it is is it puts it in a grid, and it says if you want to take it within the grid. So here I've taken this photo of Roscoe. I've, I've focused my subject. I've put it in the rule of thirds. And now I can add filters. I can add and different types of filters. I can make it lighter. I can look, make it look like it's beautiful. One of the great things about Instagram that I love particularly, that I think it's wonderful for teachers, is you can either share it to, if your students are 13 and above, they have an account, they can actually send their assignments directly to you. They click on direct and it goes straight to you. The great thing is after they make a video, because we're video logging, video log, v log is video blogging, and that's how it relates to all this. And that's what our students are doing. They're becoming viners and they're becoming Instagrammers and YouTubers and they're becoming video bloggers. Uh, they do this regularly and they get a feed. You can follow their feed and so that's what that's how you video blog, okay? So you can send it direct to anyone. They can send it to the teacher. So you can look at the assignment first, and then you can uh, look at it and see what they do. They can turn in video um, directly to you, and then you can review it. So that's the way it looks like when they choose direct. Great thing is they write text to go with it. So since they're writing text and a small amount of text, they get the writing and the reading as well because they read each other. And this is how they interact with each other. So you see Roscoe's in 100,000 pictures on it. Um, you can add a hashtag. You can say different about him here. Uh, Bill is saying his tongue is hilarious. So you can get him to do a lot when you think about this. They can still like, just like Facebook. Um, and they, they can do 15 second movie video. So this is what the movies do. You get normal, Stinson, Vesper, Clarendon, all of these different filters. Do you make it look really pretty, really professional and cool? So you could take something that looks quite normal, an event at the fair, an event at outside, just sitting during spring break and doing nothing and watching TV, you can get them to go outside and to actually move and take a video and make it look very fascinating. So then what you did for spring break or what you did for your break doesn't just become, oh, I sat around and I slept all day. I learned English by coming out and being a professional video. <laughs> um, so this is what I've done. This is so you can see some of my videos. I love it because I look really tired sometimes. I teach online and sometimes you can't see the back. With Instagram, I look beautiful. I look like brick shield. <laughs> you can't see the bags under my eyes. You just see my hair looks bright and I think, wow, I look great. <laughs> so filtering can be very, very nice. <laughs> it's all filters. It's editing. Um, you, so what are some ways that we can get our students to interact with a 15 second video? Well, there's a couple things you can do. You can have them act out a scene. So if you're doing role plays, you can take any of the role plays from the textbook or even the gap fills and have them create a quick six second video or a 15 second video where they're acting them out together. So we could read this from the textbook. It doesn't take any different types of lesson planning or anything for you. All you do is say, okay, students, now that we have, um, <laughs> oh, thanks, Tom. <laughs> um, when you have your, your students, you can just say, okay, we're going to do this in a quick video. They take out the video and they do the, the lesson just like that. So you didn't have to do anything extra. They just did the role play from the book. You just made it more interactive. Um, the other thing is they can have a video commentary relating to the subject. And sorry, these slides are the the I didn't I had to upload these really quick, but on you'll get where it's really really nice later on. So the video commentary is whatever they just finished 
saying, reading about whatever they looked at. Then you just have them go on their whatever their devices, and then if they are creating videos, then they can go and they can give you a six second or fifteen second commentary. I really enjoyed if you they watched a movie. Um, I really enjoyed this movie. I really enjoyed reading this particular chapter. I really enjoy. So they come out and they get to review it. I didn't like it, teacher. I didn't care for it. It wasn't my favorite. Please use another one next time. You can do one thing Larry Falazzo did, and I went ahead and I copied this. And Larry Falazzo's famous blogger. I wish he was here. He's very busy, though. We did ask him. We love his stuff. Is he had his student, and you can see this, do Instagram trailers. So I went ahead and made a short URL for it, and you can see his students' Instagram 15 second trailers where they review the book, they did a drawing, and then Larry explains how to do this. A particular project. You can have them role play a character to introduce them to the topic. So a lot of times when we're working, we have different types of characters that come within our context. So in history, we might have someone like Abraham Lincoln. They can act out. Um, if you're doing something like you're teaching the 1920s, you can say, okay, think about you being someone in the 1920s. Remember, you didn't have a cell phone. You didn't have anything. And then they can use different filters. They can use the sepia filter. They can use a black and white one because it the, the, their filtering makes it black and white and makes it look like in the past. So there's so many ways they can be very creative and do this. Oh, let's pretend you were in prohibition. What would you have done? Or if you were in this scene and you can create scenarios and tell them what they can role play and act and then they can do this as well. You're teaching math. They can be Rene Descartes. Maybe they learn about him and they say, I think I there therefore I am. Come up with a new phrase. I think therefore I am what? I blog, therefore I what? I Instagram, therefore I so you can do lots of different things and have them role play characters. So the difference with buying, these are some of the ways that you can do with buying. Once again, we're going to be talking about buying now, and I'll show you some of the features with that and what you can do. Now with buying, you don't get the luxury. Uh, you only create six-second videos. Your students tend to love buying a lot, but um, with buying, you don't get the luxury of actually having a way to edit. You don't get the filters like you do with Instagram. You do get the raw third, so that's good, but you don't get that filtering. So I like it less for that. I think it's a little bit more creative to do 15 second videos on Instagram. That's my opinion. And I am going to let Jake, who actually does this for these learners, come out and tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to get to tell you? Wow, you said, you said so much, though. Um, wow. Uh, we use, in, in my class, I teach a sixth grade bilingual social studies class. I teach world cultures. So I get to uh, use our, we have a class Instagram account. And basically, I use our, our class account to, to sort of record our learning. To, to keep a record of the stuff that we're doing in class. And, and, that's, and that's because they're not doing that. They're not really getting in their other classes. So it's, it's a way to, to spread the memories that we have for class. It's just a way to keep it. And it's a really simple thing for us to do. So hey, everybody. Um, I, I love, oh, I do, we, do use, we do use Vine also. And I definitely believe it in, in, I need to blog more as a class, or we need to blog more as a class. But I believe in having a, a hub of places, uh, uh, one place to keep these things. Uh, so you can embed the Instagrams, you can embed the, the vines. So I like to put those in uh, our class blog, which is a blogger for me. We're a Google Apps school, so I'm trying to use our class blog as a blogger and model that for our students. Uh, a lot of my students now are joining things like Tumblr, and they have their own search because they love to be able to read blog. Um, and and I, I love that about Vine uh, and about Instagram as well. So they definitely love going to bombard Instagram page and go like everything. <laughs> Uh, so they, they try to race to go do that. Can you imagine 11-year-olds and 12-year-olds racing to your class site to like your stuff? That's pretty great. <laughs> it, it is really cool. And, and they like. They also like whenever I'm using my phone. Um, I, I use my phone in class since they don't all have access to them. But they will, uh, they're also trying to get the notifications to show up on my screen that these people all liked it. So whenever we're looking at my phone in class 
And I used the, just the document uh, camera to do that a lot instead of plugging in so I'm a little more mobile. We're not able to mirror my phone into my projector in class. But um, this, uh, this vine was whenever we were practicing Japanese culture. Uh, we, we were able to go to Google Hangout with a class with uh, Melvina Kurashige's class in Hawaii. And they taught us a lot about Japanese culture and of the projects they were doing. And so they taught us how to use chopsticks. And we practiced with uh, bombones, with uh, marshmallows in class. And these are just a few of the, uh, I recorded a few of the vines of the students being able to, to practice that. And then we even switched up where they had to do it left-handed. And that was a lot of fun, too. Um, but I don't have the my students' faces in most of the pictures because I have issues with the um, with privacy concerns that my district has. But they still get the memory of what it was that we were doing. This is just a way to, for me to, to just show the parents what we're actually doing in class. And we have a lot of fun in class. And I don't want, I want these things to be the things that they'll remember for years and years. I remember whenever I was in fifth and sixth grade and my teachers did uh, lots of fun things with us. I wish that I had some sort of record of that. And so video is a wonderful way to do it. You just uh, video sound, the sounds of class, anything that we can do to, to help them uh, just not just to share their learning, but to just to keep record of what we're doing in class. Now, I, I want to use it more to be able to, to have them uh, actually go off and do their assignments with using these tools. But for now, they just don't have the access to it. So this is a start. And hopefully next year and the years and later, they'll be able to do that. And that's important to remember. Um, they did do BYOD. And um, so J Jake, it's his students all don't have a device. In fact, um, maybe two or three. And if he does, he's able to check out carts with uh, Chromebooks and with iPads, but it's very rare and it's very difficult. So a lot of the times, um, they're, they're, their iPads aren't really working out, aren't all together yet. It's not a very, you know, so, um, so, so it's not like his learners have access to everything. They don't. Um, they, it's not like he has a room full of devices <laughs> at all. <laughs> far from it. Definitely far from it. <laughs> um, and um, uh, Amir asked, "What did you? Uh, what is your favorite blogging platform?" I think. Well, for my students, I love Tumblr because I love that they're able to uh, to. Reblog so much easier, and uh, they seem that seems to be where the kids are. Um, professionally, I, I think that Blogger and uh, obviously WordPress are, are just great options. I think the WordPress you have issues with. You have to try to you, you end up getting too into your theme and, and trying to find a, a paid theme, and and, and I, I I tend to let the focus drift away from what what it should be from uh, exhibiting my student work and to show uh, just making it my class spot for the students to go to find out what we're doing in class and to find out the things that we shared. I, um, <laughs> I'm Jake. <laughs> Thank you, Nelly. <laughs> I'll put Jake's stuff in there. I think that, um, uh, personally, if you have young learners, um, you, between, you know, zero year, I mean, like one year old, I mean, <laughs> one year old, all the way to, um, to probably 12 or 13, Kid Blog is really good. So, Kid Blog is a great option as well. It's very safe. Students don't even need an email, it's free. It has a free app. Um, they, you can give them a login and a password. It's really easy to set up 50 blogs, 100 blogs in 10 minutes with KidBlog. Um, and that is KidBlog.org. I think it's the easiest, fastest way for any teacher to have a, a blog. Can I say my, my kids do have their own kid blogs also? But <laughs> because we don't have access to the technology very often, and we claim it just about any chance we can. Um, they, they are able to embed stuff into those too, so um, I, they, they do get to blog every now and then and, and that's what we use as kid blog. I, I definitely agree that WordPress can get very, very complicated just with all the metadata and with all the, it can get very complicated, but those, they're all great platforms and, and ones that I would expect to be around for a while, so that's uh, important to me. To remember, and I think that uh, Jake uh, kind of brought this up to me, and I, I think it's really important. A lot of times, your students already blog. They either micro blog, they're either on different things like Tumblr or Vine or Instagram 
or Twitter or, you know, even Facebook. And so they have their own. And a lot of times we think that when we introduce a class blog, we want them to have that as a habit. They already have it as a habit. That's an extra. That's an extra thing they do. So even if we have, a, like, a class blog or something like that, it, it's not like you're going to be doing something that your students um, are, uh, yeah, and that's a great point to point out, Nellie, that her students are only Facebook and WhatsApp, um, um, what, and WhatsApp as well, and, and Jake's are on Snapchat, and what else are they on? They use Kick instead of WhatsApp, they're, they're not, uh, they're the other side of that, I guess the Kick and WhatsApp are still the, uh, since Facebook bought them, I guess they got more notoriety, but, um, I think that they, they do use, they are private, they're, they're fairly private in their, the thing that they create and share. So um, Facebook and um, Kick instead of WhatsApp, but I, I don't, they're, they're kind of all over, they're, they're being introduced more and more. So they're, they're learning about new ones. Too. Guinness says, which is better, Blogger or Tumblr? If you don't have a lot of time, I think Tumblr is fastest and easiest. You can even have kids um, submit blogs to you. Um, you can even have them email blogs. You can do that in Blogger as well. I find it so much faster, and Nelly is right. It depends on your students' ages as well. If you go into um, younger learners, and James points this out, you have filter issues with Tumblr. I love Tumblr, but for students under 13 years old, I wouldn't use it. And why wouldn't I use it, even though they use it? It's because they happen to be, um, there's a lot of bad stuff that goes there. Now, I've seen Andre Spang use this in Germany with his learners and it's phenomenal it's really awesome the things they've created and you know um, the thing is that um, Tumblr is really great and everything like that but it wasn't made for educators a kid blog was edgy blogs is um, they can find really bad stuff on Blogger and WordPress as well. It's a little bit harder than um, than Tumblr and it is. But I think <laughs> right. it's Tumblr, not as easy to find yeah. appropriate stuff. It's pretty simple for them to find inappropriate stuff on Tumblr. It's easy. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's just more more content there that, that is not a, that's not appropriate for the young learners, and that's why my kids use Kid Blog whenever they are able to blog. They do blog on their own too. Well, the important part to remember is that you can make any of these, even buying an Instagram, you can find bad stuff, but you can protect the account so only the kids go to your area, um, but they're on there already, so that's one thing to to look at it about, uh, to look at it for. Um, you can protect the account so parents and students see it. So you just put sensitive posts or posts are protected, and that means only the parents have access to that. You can post work and things. And a lot of times when you think, make things private, you, your parents will be more open to that. Um, so when you go to Vine, there are certain things you can do. You can go to vine.co, and you can see a lot of stuff that people have created. I wouldn't recommend that your students do that. Why don't you want your students to do that? Because buying that code is my filter. <laughs> but for me, I like <laughs> You can make animated gifs. That's why it's awesome. Oh, uh, well, no, actually, this is the um, buying. Okay, this is buying box I'm talking about. I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. So here, they even have vines in different languages. They have vines in Espanol. So if you teach different languages, then one of the things, um, to improve your audio, by the way, anytime in WizIQ, if you hover over the video and you click to no longer have video, then it just sh shares with you my voice. It doesn't even take it off for others. You can do that with any. I've been doing that with mine throughout the process because it even kicked me out. Um, in my my it didn't support it, so that's why. Did you mention with the Vine that um that you can you can start and stop your six seconds that you can? No, I didn't do that. I think that that's a, the biggest difference. I think with Instagram that I, I don't share as many videos on Instagram. But um, okay. that you're able to just, it's just the one button to record or to stop recording. And you get that six seconds so that you can, you could do stop motion to create an animated uh, GIFs. I'll, I'm going to say GIFs instead of GIFs. Um, that you can push the, you can push the one button to stop and start your recording. But you could also just make it lots of different pictures of stuff going on in the class. So you can have, you can be very creative with Vine and uh, in using the, using the one button that you've got to record to choose which, you know, to choose how you're going to fill your frame for each individual second. So I could press and hold and take two seconds of kids over here working, 
stop and then take a picture of a kid holding up a, an assignment that he's got or something that, to fill that six seconds. So you can be really creative with that too. Instead of just using a linear uh, six seconds. And you can, okay, so when you repost somebody's vine, when you re-share it, um, it sort of works like that animated where I was talking about, if you went to my former presentation, you saw where I talked about reblog, and they would take animated GIFs. Well, what you can do is you can have, um, re, you, when they repost it, reposting is when you take somebody's creation, either an Instagram or when you have it in uh, Tumblr, they call it reblogging. In Vine, they have their own language, they have their own lingual, so it's called rebinding. It. So you just click rebind and it reposts. So if I like this video, which I did like, I thought it was pretty funny. Look at this student, what he did in Spanish. This is Vine in Espanol. It's uh, what I subscribe to and I love it because it helps me with my Spanish. I'm Mexican American. So when I went to move and lived in Germany for four years. It messed up my Spanish a little bit. So what I did was I went now, yes, hablo español. Jake hablo es más que yo. Es más que recto. Sí, sí, sí. No, mucho más. Mucho más. Mucho, mucho más. And so this person with his, um, b with his, uh, so now I re uh, look at my, the way that I look at, oh, gracias, Monica. And the way that I practice my Spanish is I look like at the six second videos on Vine. And they're doing their Spanish and they're funny. It's a great way for me to learn Spanish and I, I, I get to also see the vernacular like every day. terms that you wouldn't get in a class, but that when I go to Mexico are very useful and helpful for me awesome. to know. Um, I learn in Vine Espanol and I see a lot of teenagers and students and how they awesome. use the Vine. And they do a lot of comedy skits, so I get to learn the different comedy that they do there too. This is a student one, a student, and he did little eyes and a hat and he's doing the music to Pharrell's music as well. So a lot of times they'll take sections from movies and they'll create something funny out of it. It's very smart the way they use their six seconds. And that's the great thing about Vine, is when you have Vine or Instagram and you cut down to six seconds or 15 seconds, there's literally millions of people on these both of these social networks. You're competing with a lot of people at all, so you have to get better. I so hope that that's him saying because I'm happy in Spanish porque soy feliz and, and like looping. That's, yes. Is it? That's awesome. Uh, they the have Mr. Really Chin hashtag funny. I'm going to have to check out on there. Well, you're going to have to check some of these other things. Awesome. Um, you can view the post page. You can embed it. You can email it. You can even repost this post, which they call it a vine. You can like it or you can tweet it or share it on, on your Facebook. Um, if you go to Vine Box, that's one of the places. This is oh, so this is where you get to embed it, and you can embed anybody. So that's one of the great things is you can take these six, six seconds, even if you don't create them with your students, you can find good examples to show them. Sometimes we want to show a YouTube video, but really they respond to something that's six seconds. If they don't get it the first time, you can use any of these to introduce a new saying, a new lesson, a new topic, all of these as well. And it gives you different kinds. You can even send it as a postcard, which I think is really cool as well. You can autoplay the audio, they can keep looking at it, and they can observe this chunk of language or this chunk of learning again and again. Um, they have the rule of thirds with this as well. They cut up so you can videotape. But you look, Nelly, my slide again. Me making the slides. I was doing it by Vine, and uh, you could see it there. <laughs> I was trying to follow it in the rule of thirds, so I'm moving me to the middle. Um, and one of the great things, okay, so I'm going to go back here, is does this come to, well, now what we're doing is we're doing, uh, we're talking about, again, the theorists, and you saw this earlier where I talked about Banduda and Vygotsky, and both Vine and Instagram replicate these as well. This is a type of learning that you see. It's social learning. It's collaborative learning. They learn together with hashtags. They even suggest ideas through hashtags, and they can get a whole to do Vines revolving around 
number on the hashtag, and you can as well. So how, what can you teach or learn in six seconds? I'm going to show you what different teachers have done. Uh, I showed you what Jake did. I talked about earlier science, where they made science go viral. 227,000 people are making six second science videos. Um, you can do something if you go to vinebox.co and you look at the tags. That's why you use um, um, six second science. You can see these different videos. You see here someone did a sandwich bag and dry ice explosion. Someone did oh, over here, he did it for his science class. Did um, And he's even trying to get followers. He's a teacher that teaches um, science. Here's one that did one on PPI and too much light and photons. So this is what they is going with that. They're talking about um, too much light, too many photons, sunlight is very blue. So they're talking about scientific concepts here. Well, can explain. The, you know, they're talking about, so they're making all these videos, uh, Python, Bill Chameleon is talking about here, somebody did something with dry eyes as well. So um, there's a lot of things that you can see that teachers are doing, and all of this within science. So you can find little great pieces of work that you can show with uh, science. I showed you earlier where Caroline Leahy, if you go to directorshare.es, and you can see her students and what they do with idioms and how they practice this language. Some other ideas, you can introduce them to the topic being one of the characters. So I find that a lot of teachers, you find things like teach like a pirate and stuff, and they say be more engaging, act out. Well, it's very hard for teachers to do that. I'm animated. I'm used to being um, animated. A lot of teachers are shy. Maybe they don't want to ever do this. So one of the things you can do is for six seconds, it's not that embarrassing for you to have a half wig and to show a video and have your students are used to it. Then one of the things they can do is they can go and they can look at this and they can they can see you introducing the chapter. You can engage them that way. You can say, oh, I'm now I'm a businessman and we were going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about non-personal communication <laughs> or uh, we're going to talk about um, space and, and how space, the way we were, we're spaced together and stuff like that, how close we get together, our personal space and how we can do this. <laughs> One of the things they do in Vine, which I think is really nice, and you can find all of these, I'll show you my Listly in a little bit, but my Listly shares with you all of these examples, and give you examples on doing this so you can learn. And one of them they do, which I think is phenomenal, is they do one where they go and they are, um, when on what they do is they go and they do voiceovers for animals. So in this particular one, they took uh, six. They just have a a, a a squirrel that they they recorded, and then what they did was they made the squirrel rap to Eminem. So <laughs> there you can do voiceovers. You can have pictures of squirrels or videos, and you can have your students. You can even have young learners do something like this, where they go and they 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 show what they've learned. Um, it's really easy for them to do a video of that. You can tell students to find examples of Vines or um, Instagram videos, and you can upload to your video, your Vine account if you have them created. So if you have your young learners make little quick Vines of animals and everything and doing voiceovers, then you can have them uploaded um, themselves to your Vine account. Or you can have them go and they can do like a Google search moment, except they're doing like um, a search moment where they put up stuff. You can make, a, if you go to vinebox.co, uh, you can make whatever the videos, you can make it into a GIF. So if you want to go, for example, I would only suggest this with older learners where they have this moment. So for example, you want them to look, you want them to look uh, for examples of a non, of, um, of spacing, and I keep forgetting what that communication is um, for spacing, um, where you're together or when you're making, um, you're talking with the nonverbal and you're making transactions, different actions and stuff. You can have them look at video examples of this so they can collect and you can rebind these as well. Um, so that's something you can share it with a hashtag and that's one way to do fast pre-learning, so this is something they do before they actually uh, go and they look more into what this is about. 
interviewing skills. Let's say that you're working with adult learners and you're having them look at interviewing skills and things you're supposed to do or not do. You can actually find examples of this online. You can make it into an animated GIF so they can you can reblog it and you can create GIFs for a class to blog about. So if you have a GIF that you've created, like the little video of the chipmunk or of a squirrel, then you can post that in your blog and then you can have your students do what we did in the previous session, which is where we said, oh, um, you know, now where I had you go and I had you say, my boss says this is how I feel. And you can do things like that. Maybe when they're coming up for a test, how they feel. Um, and this is like you saw with the last one, just to refer you back to the last one where I had you do this with the animated GIFs and what this would look like. Or I put, I'm not assigning any homework uh, because of the test tomorrow. Um, you can have them do how to vi how to videos. So, for example, um, you can have where your students are doing things such as they go and what they do is um, you can have um, you can have where students, this one in this particular one, Leon Hustler did how to recycle. I've had my students in the past, we did an intercultural festival, and they did different types of how to's. How to, some of them, they were from 12 different countries, and I was teaching language learners and high school students. They love making videos, by the way. Uh, so one of them did one from Beijing, and he was how they made green tea and the custom of that. And the other one was from Japan, and they were doing calligraphy and how they do the Japanese writing and things like that. And then there was another one from Mexico, and he just wanted to show a Spanish guitar. So these are things that your students can do. In six seconds, you can do all of this. In fact, if you go to Vine, you're going to see these incredible kids, and they're singing, and they're playing the guitar, and they're playing the violin, and they're looping them, and they're becoming famous. They're becoming like Justin Bieber discovered. Justin Bieber was discovered on YouTube. So for students, this is very engaging. This is, you know, they want to be the next Justin Bieber. They want to be discovered. You can have them do how-to videos of a lot of things, how to cook a certain recipe. If you have a bunch of adults, they can go and they can make videos of how to cook a certain recipe. Maybe they have a tip. Our adult learners are moms and dads, and one of the most famous Liners out there that I absolutely love is called Bat Dad. And he's a dad and he dresses in a Batman suit and he does all these funny skits. But your adult students, when you're working with adult learners or even uh, college students, they can show how to draw something or they can show how a tip when you go shopping, this is what you do. And people love to do that. They love to to share tips, things that they're good at. You can have them do a re weekly reflection of what they learn. Uh, Joe McGraw does this. He does Monday reflections, and he tells you the learning. Um, he goes back and he tells you. So you can do that with your students. You can have them up, and they can say, this is my one takeaway for this week from Ms. Sanchez's class. Or the one from Mr. Govan's class. This is my takeaway. This is what I love that I learned this week. Or this is the blog. You can have them say from the class blog, what was the most exciting moment? Or their class Vine or Instagram, what was their favorite moment, um, their takeaway? And you have them reflect on the learning that way. They go and they do six-second videos and they say, this week we learned about prohibition. This is what I really loved. I didn't know that they stopped. You couldn't ever or buy alcohol. They might say something like that. Or maybe they say something like, in the 1920s, I didn't know they did their hair that way. Or I didn't realize how hard it is to communicate. I can't imagine how they communicated without a, 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 um, without texting or without a box. They actually had to send secret messages instead of sending text messages. How lucky we are. So there's different types of reflections they can do. And they'll do this with a video and reflect on the learning. Um, they can critique, opinion, and review. There's an art teacher, and he's got a lot of his students, and the way he teaches art is he has them go through the different weeks, and they find examples of that particular art, and they make a critique on it, and they say, this is my favorite example of that art. This is a fantastic way to get them to look at things that are really boring. For example, well, not boring to us. They're, they're educational, wonderful, great pieces of literature. 
But let's say that uh, Maria Jesus, who's coming on next, and she's doing this wonderful thing on El Greco. A lot of your students wouldn't connect with that unless you could do something like a video or um, and, and reflect on it this way. They take six seconds, they take 15 seconds to give an opinion. They find their favorite example of that. Uh, for example, Renaissance painting, there's a lot of them. The ones with the babies and things like that, there's, a, there's this hilarious Tumblr. And it talks about romance and Renaissance paintings. And it takes the babies and it, it's called Funny Renaissance Babies or something like that. Babies in Paintings. And it's one of the most famous Tumblrs. And I love it now. I enjoy looking at these paintings because of this Tumblr. Every time I see one in a museum, I think it's funny and I get to learn more about it. Like, why do they have these random babies inside these paintings? So, so these are things that your students can look at. A definition or fact of the day. So you can come out and you can even make it to where you say a fact of your subject today. And that shows how you as a teacher are knowledgeable. And a lot of us these days feel like we're not knowledgeable. But it's so easy for us to just take um, this and just for six seconds say, did you know that with uh, science, uh, or you can, you know, just your fact of the day, something that they know every single day. And then it's not so boring for them because they're not reading a fact of the day. They're listening to you. You're introducing them to something, and it's only six seconds or 15 seconds, and they get to focus, and they think, wow, that's kind of cool, teacher. I didn't know that. I didn't know that when you mix um, baking soda and you uh, mix vinegar, and they would make an eruption. I didn't know that. That's kind of cool, teacher teacher. I like that. So there's different things that you can do with um, a fact of the day as well in your subject. You can have them do public service announcements. This particular girl, Emily Kapu, does one where it stops cyberbullying. She does in six seconds a whole entire public service announcement. That's what we call them. That's when um, on TV you'll see these little types of uh, videos, and, and they're very short. Um, what they do is they show how to teach something like here. We have one where um, we get a bunch of parents to do It's action-oriented, so we get a bunch of parents to read to kids to their literacy. The students can do these themselves. They can do this on cyberbullying. There's a lot of vines out there that does this. Emily does this fantastic one. She's a kid and she did it on cyberbullying. It's a public service announcement. You can find all of these if you look on the actual tab. They're going on field trips. You can have them collect video samples of what they learned. What was their favorite thing learning? Here you have Justin Jarrell. He's taking a shot, a video of the giraffes and how they're interacting in nature. A lot of times our students, we don't know what they're doing. We don't understand. A lot of times they'll go to a field trip and they have no purpose. Now they have a purpose. They can take videos. They can take pictures. You have Instagram. It's great because they can take 15 second pictures. They can tell you what's going on. This is what I observed, teacher. I really liked how they were uh, cuddling together, the giraffes, or that they twirled. Um, they got together, and there's a mom and a dad. And you have them all with their own reflections. What's their favorite thing that they learned in this field trip? And now they're not just going to a field trip to get out of school. They're actually tying it to the learning, they're reflecting, they're observing, they're taking in everything else and they're paying attention and they're learning, they're seeing that learning is all around them and they're more excited. They're not like, oh, another boring field trip. They're like, wow, I get to take video of it. I get to be a video commentator. Um, so there's lots of things that you can find more. Um, there's a hundred of ideas for Instagram and for, um, for Vine as well. You can go to the side blog. Blogspot.com has a great uh, section on 20 ways to use Vine um, in education. Um, these are some of the ideas. Pair with information on the class website or blog. Announce homework to students and parents. So when the parents are seeing, they can see everything. And you can just announce it. You can say, they have a paper this week due. They have a test that's coming in. These are some quick tips on how to relieve them or to make them feel better. Make sure they have breakfast. You know, you can do all of these things really quick with Vine and Instagram. Market a school's upcoming event. Ooh, we have the PTA. Come. This PTA, we're going to show your Vine or Instagram pictures and videos. Uh, we're going to show these projects. 
theme pair share a virtual trip. You can grab preview or exit pre interview in understandings. You can offer parent testimonials. How awesome is that? You can collect all these testimonials about your class. And if you're selling a site, let's say you're doing um, your course, let's say your institute, your language institute, it's something that they go and they purchase extra for their kids, then you have all of this. Yes, exactly. Get parents to do some homework at homework with their kids. But then you have all of these video testimonials from your parents. Oh, miss just like Jake. Jake has parents that say, you're Gary's favorite teacher. I think that's awesome. He actually has this on his Twitter with the teachers. He didn't even ask for that. He didn't even solicit it. But they go on his Instagram and they go on his Twitter and they're like, he's one of the best ones. So I think that that's one of the things that you can do. Um, here they have designed mini book trailers, film solutions to math problems. They have really good ideas. They're not just 20 ideas and buy they're actually good ideas. So you can find all of these if you go to my Listly. I have given you the examples. Um, in my Listly, I have tons and tons of information. So you have to look at the one that actually says buying. There's three pages, and then the one that says Instagram. Now you can do this address up here. The reason why I don't have that is because I. Um, Oh, well, I just don't have that right now. I'm sorry. I'll put that in the box later. Um, and and thank you can you. find all thank of my you, Shelley, presentations. Thank you, Tom, for adding. Uh, we're going to continue go, the discussion uh, here. So let me go ahead um, and, if you're and put that in. That's it. So a little you hint. Can go and you can get access uh, I suggest to you go later. there uh, I'll share because I'll that's where later. you're going to get um, you information on how to get your certificate. So thank you, Jake. We saw you. you got a great voice. I I think you should have uh, it went a bit viral. You know, I, I, I voice think like thousands of people. Um, um, actually, I think I got a thousand idea. people. All right, so thank Instagram you. Post, so <laughs> nice meeting um, you. I think it has good ideas. And, uh, we're looking forward to more. <laughs> I'm pretty excited so, about uh, it. But, join um, us thank next you so much. And enjoy the rest. Maria, Josie and Maria is here with us. She does great and, things in uh, Spain. This will be recorded with her students and, and how she gets them online blogging. Bye. So thank you very much, everyone.